Hello, everyone. Thank you for connecting and um, happy May Day. Raji mentioned the importance of embracing everyone, the importance of bringing um, new persons on board because the task as we know it is not an easy task. Activism is ongoing um, and it's open to um, collaborations from every corner of Africa. And so if you are new here and this is the first time you are hearing about what we've been doing, uh, or probably you've heard about it in previous editions, but you, you could not really have the time to participate. And you are here. You are most welcome. Af Afia really appreciates your participation. What we are going to do for this first part of the demonstrations is to prepare those who do not have Wikipedia account at all. We are going to guide you to do the, uh, to create an account. Um, and then also guide you to sign on to the dashboard. And then the second part of the demonstration will focus on how to make edits. Um, these are the skills you are um, you, you need to acquire so that you can be effective in participation for this, um, for this uh, campaign. So from this, I see that we have a crop of people who do not have an account at all. We are going to guide you to do that. And then we have a crop of people who do have an account, but probably have forgotten their uh, login credentials. We're going to see how um, we can help you to reclaim or reset your account. All right, so let me share my screen. And um, let me just say that whilst we are at it, if you have any um, questions, do your best, just do your best to let me know. Before I go into the demonstration, let me give you this website. Um, it's, it's very important. We have, over the years, what we try to do is that we put um, all of the information about the campaigns uh, on a subdomain on the Aflia website. And so even if um, we have the demonstration and then you need to get to a place where you can get more information or clarification, um, this is a website to, to go, uh, web.aflia.net forward slash Afliwik. So I'm, I'm quickly going to show that page and tell you what you can find from there and then um, we can continue. When you click on the link that I sent you, it brings you here, uh, which is like the home page for the campaign. It talks about the campaign, the duration. Um, when you scroll down, you are going to see um, a snapshot of the statistics for the campaign. Um, at the moment, we have 73 editors. It means 73 of us have um, signed on to the dashboard. We're going to talk about that. And then we have some. So I've shared yeah. the link again. I have shared the link again. And I'm saying that the link I just shared with you is um, the landing the landing page for the African Library Activism Month. And so when you come here, you are going to get like all the important information you need about the campaign. When you scroll to the bottom, even how you can participate is also indicated there, what we are going to be doing today. The first step is to create your account. The second step is to link to the dashboard. These two steps, we are going to do them now. And then the process of editing um, also begins where you find articles that need assistance by way of citations. Uh, going to look for reliable sources and then coming to do the edits um, and then the process of completing the edit, all of them are here. So you can copy that link and, and put it somewhere and then let's go straight into the, um, the creation of the account. All right, so how do you create an account? It's a very simple process. I think Dr. Kemp even mentioned it. Um, I wouldn't want to just share a link for you and then it becomes, I would want to guide you through the process in a way that um, it's very easy to, to get. So in Google or in your search, open your, your browser and um, 
at the search bar, just type Wikipedia. Just type Wikipedia and then search. When you do that, um, of course, you are going to see the whole links and um, sources. Then you click on Wikipedia. I hope you are following. Um, and so when you click on Wikipedia, it brings you to this initial page, or if you like, the language page. Um, and obviously, we are dealing with English, but if if you are a French-speaking or if you are Portuguese or whatever, you select the language and it will send you to the language Wikipedia. So I'm going to click on English here. Now, when I click on English, it brings me to the home page or the main page for Wikipedia, right? Right at the top, top right corner, you would see two um, actions or tasks. You would see one that says create account. You would see one that says login. And for those of us who do not have an account, I'm sure you've been accessing Wikipedia for some form of information or the other, but probably you've never um, seen that there is these two tasks that are at the top right corner. And so this is where if you are new to Wikipedia um, and you want to create an account, once you go to Wikipedia, you get to the main page. At the top right corner, you would see create an account. Then you click on create an account. This is for those who don't have an account at all. And I'm sure this is not the first time you're even trying to create a certain account um, for an online service. If you already have an account on Wikipedia, what you are required to do is to log in. You click on log in, and then you will see a different um, set of instructions. In this case, it will ask you for a username and your password, just the two. I'll come back to this. But let's deal with those who don't have an account at all. So I click on create account, and then it's going to give me a very simple form, right? A very simple form. It will ask you for your username. It will ask you for a password. It will ask you to confirm the password. It will ask you for an email. And then the last part. Let me start with the username. Now, um, you, what is a username is what you would prefer to be known as on on the on the wiki on the wikipedia platform so it's different from your name is we're not asking for, for your name username is it could be your guy name <laughs> it could be any name you are fond of right you could choose to put your name even though it's not very advisable it's a it's a matter of choice anyway all right and so it could be any name any any name that you want to be identified with on Wikipedia or for any of the Wikimedia projects, you can put it there, okay? So assuming you are Laurentia, if you are Laurentia, whatever, whatever, um, let's say Laurentia Opoku, you can decide to say um, Law Opok or Law OPK, and that becomes your username, right? If you want, you can put out all your Laurentia Opoku, like I'm saying, which is not very advisable, but it's your choice. But just get some name that makes it easier uh, to identify yourself with. A short name is always preferable. And bear in mind that your username is um, case sensitive. And so if somebody this, what I have here as law OPK is not the same as law OPK, all caps, all small. Neither is it the same as law OPK. Neither is it the same as law OPK. These are all different usernames. Now, I'm saying that because I'm, I'm highlighting on this because whichever way you decide to indicate your username, make sure you keep it so that when you are trying to come back to login, you won't have a problem. And then you'll be asking yourself, ah, but it's the same password I use. Why am I not getting? Probably have messed up on some of the your, your cases, okay? 
So these are not the same. They are different. In fact, these are one, two, three. These are four different users. So make sure that when you are inputting a username, you are inputting um, a combination of your cases that you will always remember. And then when you do that, in case somebody has used your username already, um, when you try to do that, uh, Wikipedia is going to tell you that, oh, somebody has picked this username, so change it, right? Uh -huh. So when it happens like that and you still want to keep it, you can either introduce some characters or some numbers and then you, you continue to try and see if until you find a, a name that nobody is using or a username that nobody is using. I believe you understand what I'm trying to say. In my case, this this is my the combination I have. So you see that I have caps and then small. And because I'm already registered, it will tell me that somebody is using it. Let me put one in CK, right? So you see that once I put one, it means that this is a unique username. You cannot share your username with anyone. Okay, then you put your password. Whatever password that you want to put, you can put it there. You repeat the same password, okay? You, you have to repeat the same password. And then you put your email address. You put your email address. Now, this is optional, but it's always recommended. Uh, personally, I recommend it. You don't need to have an email account to create a Wikipedia account, but it is always helpful if you are um, a user and you intend to be an active user, then you need to have an email account. Because after you create this account, you're going to receive a notification in your email. Okay. And that notification in your email is going to tell you that, okay, your account creation has been successful. And beyond that, when you find yourself in a situation where you can't remember your password, and you need to reset your account. You would have to come back here and then request for them to send you a link for you to reset your account. This is why having your email linked to your Wikipedia account is so useful. It makes it easier for you to reset your account, reclaim your account where there's a problem, all right? And so, yes, even though it's optional, it is recommended. And that's why they even put it in the brackets and say recommended, okay? And then you scroll down to the capture and the capture is just a security feature. What you are simply supposed to do is you type out what you see. And just like the way the username is characterized, the capture is case sensitive. So for instance, what I see is C-A-G-E-S-R-U-S-T-Y. Okay. And what I see, all these are small letters. I can refresh it if I don't see it clearly. You can you can click on refresh so that it gives you another um, rendition. And what I see here, all of them are also small. I will simply type P S H A W B A S H. And when I'm done, I will click on create your account. And once I click on create your account the account will be created. You would receive an email with the confirmation that your account is created. So I'm gonna go over it again. You just type Google, uh, you Google Wikipedia, you go to the Google Wikipedia, it brings you to the language page, the initial uh, uh, landing page or the splash screen if you like. You go to the language of your preference, and then at the top right corner of your screen, you are going to see create account. And at the create account, you click on create account. And when you click on create account, it's going to send you to the account creation page where um, a short form will be given to you to complete. So we click on create account here and then I create account, I will input my username, the username of my choice. Remember that it's case sensitive and whatever you do, you have to keep it. You have to keep it. 
So I can say cake H H Onama. Let's see if somebody has this. You know, it could be you should just be um creative with the way you want to do it. You put in your password, you repeat the password, you put in your email address, and then you enter the capture, which is B A U M. C O R E. Like I said, if you can't see it clearly, you ask for it to give you another rendition, and then it'll bring you another one. You type what you see: D A Z E S P E S O S. And then once you are through with all of this, you click on create your account. Wikipedia will send you an email to confirm that your account has been created and now you will be required to log in. Now, what has been the problem over the years um, after we started engaging with um, African librarians on these uh, um, um, campaigns is that people will create and then they'll forget either their password or they'll forget their username and so when they have to go back to login, it's a big, big problem for them. And we have people here who have even indicated the same thing. But once you have created your account, what is next? Next is to log in. So you are now, if you have an account on Wikipedia, you are rather going to see this login, okay, instead of going to click on create account. So once the account creation is completed, it brings you here. Now it's going to ask you your username, and then it's going to ask you your password. The username you use to create the account, that same format, same rendition of cases that you used, and then the same password. If you mix things up, when it's supposed to be a small letter H, and then you make it a capital letter H, when there is not supposed to be an underscore, and you put an underscore, when there is not supposed to be a space and you put a space, you are not going to have access to your account until you put in the same username that you put when you were creating the account and the same password that you put when you were creating your account. So in my case, to make things very easy for me, when I created the account, I asked my browser to save the credentials. And this is one thing that maybe I'm going to recommend for you, because you are new, it's very likely that if you don't write it down somewhere or you don't pen it down somewhere in your diary, chances are you are going to forget. You have so many accounts to deal with, right? And so to make things easier for yourself, let technology manage your life. Let your browser save those credentials so that anytime you are coming in, you can just, once you come to the page, your browser can recall and then you can just ask it to put it in for you, all right? You should always have a backup is recommended because you never know when um, you are going to have, you are going to be needing, or you are going to be needing to log into your Wikipedia account outside of your personal account. And this is one other question that is important. If you don't have a personal PC or the PC you have access to is not personal, but multiple access, public use, I don't recommend you saving your, your login credentials on those PCs or laptops, please. If you don't have them by yourself or you don't have a personal piece, a, a PC, you can write it down somewhere, keep it anywhere you have to have, you have to log in, you can, you can call it up and then log in. So please take note of this, these are security issues because somebody can have access, do certain things and then get your account blocked in your name, meanwhile, it may not be you. So take note of this. I only recommend saving in your browser if it is yours. And even that, have a backup somewhere, write it down somewhere, so that when your PC crashes or you're away from your PC, you can still have access to it. So please, for those who have forgotten, for those who have forgotten your account, your login exactly. credential, yes, either whether your username or your password, you just don't know how you are going to come uh, uh, get it. The same process for you, just on slight difference. You go to the Wikipedia page and then you click on login instead of create account. So you click on login. Now, when you click on login, it's going to ask you for two things, your username 
and your password, okay? And then you click on login. If, if you don't have a problem, then you're done. But if you have a problem accessing the account, there are two instructions here or support features here. Forgot your password. This is one way of resetting. It gives you the opportunity to create a new password, okay? So you click on forgot your password and then it brings you to this page. Now, you would have to put in your username. You'd have to put in your username and it must be that same username you used to create the account, the original account. And then you come to your email address. Remember, um, the email address was saying, put in your email address when there is a problem so that they can send it to you. Okay, so then you can put in your email address here. And when you do so, maybe assuming I have a problem with my, I don't remember my password and then um, I want to reset it because I don't remember. At least I do remember my username so, and the set password. When I click on reset password, immediately Wikipedia is going to send me an email. And when I receive that, that email will come with a link and some instructions telling you click on this link to reset your password. And when you click on the link, it brings you to the page where you can provide a new set of password. Okay. So that is the process. You, so for, for those who uh, are having the problems, I think I just went through that. I, I don't want to tamper with my account uh, for the sake of demonstration, but the process is just what I have explained to you. You go to login, you come here, forgot your password. You click on forgot your password. It brings you to this reset password page. You put in your username, you put in your email address, and you click on reset password. And you are going to receive an email. When you open the email, you are going to see a link with instructions that says click to reset password. When you click, it brings you to a page and then ask you to give your new password. And you will provide the new password twice and then your account is reset. So when the account is reset, you would now log in with the username and the new password that you have created. And then you will have access to your account. Do not encourage, honestly, we do not encourage you creating double accounts. It will not be good for you. It's not the best of practice, it's not ethical. So please, when you create the account, keep records of the credentials. When you create the account, keep records of the credentials. When you reset your account, keep records of the credentials. And I've showed you how you can do that. Um, uh, without you having an account, all the contributions you make will not be credited to you. You understand? When If you don't have an account, it's like anonymous uh, contribution and it will not be credited to you. And that means that you don't exist on Wikipedia. You just came in, added something, and you left. It will not be credited to you. But with your account, that is what, like Sunny is saying, you will be able to contribute. The contributions will be credited to your name. And that is what will also allow the other Wikimedians on the plat on the system to know that this person is a contributor to our resources. That's what I have to say. Right. Okay. So um it's it's an ecosystem of um knowledge builders if you like now the point is if you have an account you become part of this ecosystem um there are there are many other features even on wikipedia where you can make a contribution and then somebody needs to reach out to you uh um, and then get some further information somebody can reach out to you uh, to even to establish some collaboration with you. There are a whole lot of other things, but if you do not have an account, um, you are non-existent, and there is no uh, there is no chance or opportunity for you know interacting with 
the other contributors on the platform um, in a manner in which it is sustainable. So yes, we want to create a pool that are reliable and active and visible. Okay. And so that's why we're doing all of this. Now, if you have an account on Wikipedia, then you are in the position to make contributions on Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, and what we are doing here um, as part of this campaign is mobilizing librarians so that they are now able to um, make contributions on Wikipedia. Now, it could be subject matters related to your areas of interest, related to your country, related to Africa, you know, any other thing that you are interested in. And then when you come across an article and you believe that you are in the position to uh, provide some form of contribution to make the act, then um, that makes an editor, all right? Okay, okay, good. Okay. So Wikipedia consists of a bunch of articles sharing free information. And like I said, every article that you see was created by an individual or a group of individuals. In fact, um, whatever you create on Wikipedia as an article, others have the right to contribute if they have um, they believe that they have the necessary uh, expertise to to improve what you have created. So when you see an article like this that is explosive, um, chances are that it was not just one person that developed this article. Chances are that somebody started it. And, um, other other people came to add more sections, add more information, added more references and all of the other things. All these things are what we call or term contributions or edits, okay? Yes, so maybe if I check the history part of this article, we are going to see um, how this article has evolved from when it was created to now. All right, so yes, you see revision history, you'd see the timestamps, who who did what, you know, um, and all that. Somebody did this, somebody did this, somebody did this, all of that. The date and time, you know, right from when um, it was originally uh, developed. All of that is here, okay? And you can go all the way down, depending on um, how old the article is. You can go down, 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 if you want to know the originator, but yes. So I'm just showing you this bit. It's not so much important, but I'm just showing you just for you to know that um, this is a collaborative space. Uh, no one person has and knows it all. And so once you start a subject, others can um, contribute to the subject. All right. Okay. So let's find an article. Editing Wikipedia begins with finding an article. And so... Um, what I've done is to try and identify one article. Maybe I'll use that article to make it. Let me look for elections in Ghana. Let me just search for elections in Ghana. And one of the things that we're doing um, for this campaign let me go to that, is either add, you either add a reference to articles where references or citations are needed, you know, general text edits, correct grammar, um, structure, you know, the, the article in a format that makes it appealing to read. Um, you know, basically anything that has to do with the research process, right? So for example, when you're developing an article, and for those who've been involved, especially with academic librarians, who've been involved in either supporting to put together a manuscript or any form of writing or body of work, um, editing on Wikipedia is, is very similar. It's just that you are doing it on a, a different platform with some variations with a set of rules. So it's not a big deal like that. It's, it's not so much of a, a steep learning curve. 
So let's go to the next step, which we've done and uh, we couldn't complete. Finding articles that need citations. Um, contributing on Wikipedia starts with finding an article. Whether you want to contribute a content or you want to contribute um, uh, an improvement by way of edits or article structure, you want to add more information, or you even want to add citations. And for, for us as librarians, this is one of the very important areas. Um, for any piece of information, its credibility relies on the, the originality of the source or even the validity of the source or the credibility of the source. If you make a statement on what you on, you make any statement and then people ask you, uh, who said it? So one way of finding articles that have problems is to use a citation hand tool. Um, maybe the direct link won't help. I'm going to go through the process like I did the Wikipedia. Just go to Google and type citation hunt and Google is going to bring it up for you and then you click on it. Citation hunt is a, a tool that helps you to hunt statements or phrases or sentences or paragraphs that need references on Wikipedia. So it's been designed in such a way that it crawls the Wikipedia content and anywhere that um, people have indicated this statement needs a citation or this paragraph needs a citation, it, it produces it for you. It makes it very easy for you to, 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 to identify statements that require citation, right? And so um, when you come to the citation hunt, you simply have to tell or identify an area of interest for you yourself. Okay, you can you can ask it to generate automatic um, statements where you can add citations to, uh, but then you can also preferably put in a specific topic um, depending on your area of interest and, and it becomes easy for you to search um, within that uh, frame for you. Okay, so maybe if, uh, if I'm interested in content about Ghana, because I'm from Ghana, and then I say, give me content up from Ghana. What it's going to do is that it will pull in the background every information about Ghana and then present to you one by one information that relates to the country Ghana and the articles that refer to those information and which points you would need to provide the citation. And so let's see what it presents here. I can pick anything from here. Okay. Maybe let's do Christian schools. Okay. So then it brings up Christian schools in Ghana, articles on Christian schools in Ghana that need some um, beefing up by way of adding citations. So the school won the moot court competition for the first time. The program was introduced to a, sec a second educational cycle. This is a statement of fact and obviously must be accompanied by a specific reference. And so you see it. Now, assuming you are able to provide the reference here, you, you click on the article, then it sends you to the page, directly sends you to the, um, the Wikipedia page, and then you would search for where the statement says citation needed. And so here we see it for three consecutive years, 72, 73, 74, the school led West Africa in the advanced da, 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 to statistical figures from education ministry. In 2004, the school won the World Cadet Championship held in London. In 2013, the school was deemed as the overall best school. In. Now, in fact, all of this part are statements and then here, this, let me just say, <clears throat> this whole paragraph, they are statements of facts without any reference. So now the question is, what shows that this information that you put here is true? It is true when there is a reference. 
It is true when we can verify the information that is put here. And that's what references help us to. And um, that's what it means by improving Wikipedia, because the more you are able to provide credible sources, uh, the more valid the statements of facts in those articles are, all right? Because people can refer to those secondary sources and then confirm the statements that are in there, okay? Um, and so that's one way of finding an article. Maybe I can use this to just go through the process of adding a citation, yeah. yes, so that we are not, we, we don't go back and forth. So now that we found this article and we obviously realize that this whole sentence here, there are so many statements of facts that we can provide references and, and make it look better, okay? Um, in fact, there are so many. You can see it looks like this whole subsection here can, can use a lot of our help. And if you're in Ghana and um, you know about this school or even if you can source information from the internet to help improve this information or to help the improve this section, kudos to you. And that's what we're doing this whole month, helping to improve the statements of facts that are um, on Wikipedia about our countries, our areas of interest and all that. So how do you do that? Now, because I have come here, you would see this is the reading mode. Um, I think yesterday, was it? Yeah, yesterday they, they, we talked about the anatomy of the Wikipedia article. I wouldn't go into that. But automatically, every article is in a reading mode until you activate the editing mode. So at the top of where you have the article name, you would see read, okay, highlighted or underline, let me put it that way. It means that you're in the reading mode. When you want to make an edit, like we want to do now, we want to add some references um, to, to, to give some credence to the statements of claims that have been um, made under the subsection award, I would have to click on edit, okay? I would have to click on edit. Now, when I click on edit, you would see that the, uh, Article now becomes like a Word document for me where I can type and I can delete and, and I can make changes. That's what the edit does. So you see that it moves, the, under, the underlining moves away from read to edit. And now when I put the cursor, it actually affects the text, right? So everywhere I put the text, the cursor, you can see, it means that I can type in and I can do a lot of things, but we are here for a purpose. We want to see how we can provide more information to validate these statements of claim here. And we are doing that by simply adding references. So for three consecutive years, 72, 73, 74, the school led the West Africa in the uh, uh, advanced level certificate examination according to statistical figures from the education ministry. Let's see if we can get information on that. Now, in 2004, the school won the World Cadet Championship in London. So this statement like this shouldn't be something I should struggle to find a proper reference on. So I, what I'm going to do, how do I get the source? I will copy the sentence, okay? The name is what? Thomas, St. Thomas Aquinas. I will go to Google. I will paste the sentence, and then I will add, of course, you know how to find references. So this one, I will, whichever way you want to find it. Just to see what, Google will come up with, okay? Now you see that the first, the first reference is Wikipedia itself, but that's what you are looking to improve, okay? So let's go down and see if St. Thomas Aquinas School in 2004, it won't find. Schools Online in 2004, it won't find. Now you realize that I'm not picking certain um, I'm not picking just any reference because some references are not credible. A Facebook reference is not a reference at all, um, obviously. 
And um, well, this is Ghana schools online. I don't trust this reference. Um, because I'm in Ghana, I know what it is. Uh, and then this is obviously um, not a, a credible reference. So, you know, approach this process of identifying credible reference as though you are doing or you are working on a research manuscript, right? Definitely, you must take a look at where you are picking the source from, okay? News Watch Ghana is a news medium in, in Ghana, but it doesn't directly give information about what we're looking for. And so let's continue to see St. Thomas, St. Thomas. We don't have the best of luck with this one. Let's try another statement of fact and see. Let's see if we can get another one. Um, in 2003, okay, this should be something that we can find from the internet. So, St. Thomas Aquinas. Let's see. So you make sure you do away with all those um, Wikipedia sources because you're actually looking for a source to improve Wikipedia. So you avoid Wikipedia sources and even the mirrors of Wikipedia. Um, yeah, so Facebook, avoid all those social media platforms. They are not credible sources for okay. hmm. That's interesting. And um, I'm happy we are going through this so that you know that finding sources is not a walk in the park. It's not just about picking anything and choosing it. You have to have at the back of your mind the interest to improve. Uh, because if you make an article better, someone else reads it and they gain knowledge. It goes into your credit indirectly. But of course, you made the world a better place by providing um, information. So I'm going to switch the the search command around and see in 20, is, is, was it, is it 2013? Okay, let me see. I'll just say the best school. Or the overall best high school in Ghana in 2013. Let's see if there's any information like that. Okay. So the more you struggle to get... I have seen the city FM. 2013 WASI rankings. Okay, so the WASI rankings are a bit different from overall best school. There is a... So this could be... There is another one that says 2013 WASI rankings. Out of the top 10. Okay, let's see. Let me look for Aquinas, if there is Aquinas here. Okay. Aquinas. There is no Aquinas here. We can make the search. Let me make Thomas. There is no Thomas, there is no Aquinas. So, yeah, obviously. So, here is here's one of the problems. You would want to make sure that certain claims are not subjective. If there is no reference online to, to support this claim, it's, it's, um, so it's, it's as good can as... We go to the, can we search, check the National Science and Math School page? Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Because after that one, we can, yeah. we can get it. 2013. Winner for the so we do away with okay so we have good this is a credible source major online it's a media house and um, this is one thing about when you are improving content especially uh, if you have the the benefit of your country perspective i know this source is credible because i'm here right uh -huh. but um, especially if you are dealing with a certain subject matter that is, um, you are not exactly very privy to the local perspectives. You 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 are not really able to tell whether a certain news platform is credible or a certain reference is you know credible in that. But I can do that because I know this one. So I have found one one reference. Um, 
I have copied the URL, the simple process is copying the URL. I come back to edit. Then this is the statement of fact that I have found a reference to. So I put the Keza at the, behind the full stop, okay? And then I jump to the top. You are going to see the task bar at the top. Wherever you go, the task bar will follow you, okay? This is the task bar of the paragraph, the what I want to italicize, what I want to link or cite, insert, whatever. It's always there. And these are not new. If you use Word, these are not new, especially with the paragraph, the italics, or whatever formatting style. And then the, the hyperlinking is not new. It's the same thing in Word. The other features that are new is the site that we are going to do right now. Um, what I want to do, a certain bullet structure is not new. You want to insert a certain symbol or whatever, these things are, are there, you know? So it's very much like what you are used to in Word, just some slight differences. But yeah, we have this information. How do we cite it? So I click on site here. When I click on site, because I put the Keza, let me stop right here. Because I put the Keza here and I clicked on site, the site um, pop-up, where window would, would come up exactly where the, the Keza was placed, all right? And then there are many ways of doing the citation. You can do the automatic citation, you can do the manual, and you can reuse. Now, reuse is when you have a certain reference already cited, right? Because, for instance, if you look at this um, newspaper publication, there may be more than one statement of fact that probably will be useful in this article about St. Thomas Aquinas. So when you make reference to more than one statement of fact, you can repeat the reference. And you do that by simply reusing instead of um, um, claiming it as a unique reference. All right. But this time around, this is the first time we are putting it there. And so I will simply copy the URL here, and then come and paste it here. So you see the instruction that says, enter a link or a reference code, either ISBN, DOI, whatever. It's the automatic is, it picks whether it's a URL, if you are picking from a, 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 a scientific paper, if it's, or from a book, and then you have the ISBN, you can paste the ISBN, or from a research work, you can paste the DOI, and then it will it will just create. Okay, when when you paste it, you click on create, and it will generate the reference for you. Automatically generate the reference for you, and then you have to click on insert. When you click on insert, then this one now gets inserted into the article. Um, in text referencing is numbered for Wikipedia articles, that's the reference structure they use. And so now you would see that um, the reference I just inputted is now reference number two. When we go down to the reference section, you are going to see reference number two, St. Thomas Aquinas emerges, my journey, you know, and the dates. The dates I added, the reference is also there. Okay. But, in order to cement this edit, it doesn't end there. You have to click on publish changes because you've done a change to this article, right? So you click on publish changes and it's going to ask you, what did you do? Okay. Um, this is an edit summary. Now, you would normally want to give a description of what you did so that at the view history or at the article history portion, People are able to tell what people are doing by way of contributions. You know, it makes things easier. All right. And so you always try to describe what you did. And what did I just do? I added. So I added a reference. I'm begging you, um, you don't have to, you don't have to write an essay. It's, it's, it's a summary, not even a sentence, please. Just what you did. If you, if you, um, if you added a reference, just say added a reference. If you um, if you corrected 
and like if you made a grammatical error changes, you, you just say uh, you corrected grammat grammatical error, something like that, not a sentence or any essay, please. All right, uh, we should practice that. And then the hashtags that we use for this campaign, uh, um, these ones are still there. You can still use them. Afli week, uh, it doesn't matter whether it, it, this is not case sensitive, it doesn't matter. Afli week, one leg, one ref, okay. And then, so you always try to add this um, so that um, it makes it easier for us to, you know, when we're looking at people generating information about what, what is happening on Wikipedia with relates in relation to these hashtags. Uh, it makes it easier for people to see. So you put in what you did, and then you add the Afli Week and the One Lay One Ref. These two hashtags are enough. And then you click finally on Publish Changes. Okay. And then it's done. Once you click Publish Changes, your article moves away from the edit mode back into reading mode. And then you would see your edits there. Okay, and then when you scroll down, your reference will be there. Right, so that's the process of adding a citation. Um, I just showed you, you can use the citation hunt to do that. You can also use the, um, the article finder on the dashboard. Right, so that's, that's um, one way of improving in fact, the truth of the matter is that this article can use a lot of improvement. Um, you would even see from the classification of the article that it's a start class, which means that there are so many other things that can be done to improve this article. There's information on the location. Um, there's, uh, I don't see any information on, on, on the history of the school. Every school would have some form of history. It could be your task to research the history and then um, create a sub article that, you know, talks uh, the sub topic that talks about the history. Um, we have academics here, you know, somebody even provided the programs, you can talk about them, some affiliations. There are other things that you can talk about. All right, um, here. Okay. There are more citation needed tags that we can respond to. Okay. That we can check. And so for any article, you can have it like this. Now there are there are there are other articles that may not necessarily have the citation needed tag, but when you read it, you realize that no, like we just did here. Right from sentence one to sentence four, there is a need for um, a reference to be there because they are all statements of facts and they must some way, somehow be validated with a reference, secondary reference outside of Wikipedia, okay? Um, and so, yes, we have that. Um, so that's one way of adding a... Um, uh, that's one way of making an edit, which is adding a citation. But assuming I have some information about the history of um, St. Thomas Aquinas as a school, um, and structurally, it will be probably better to for it to come somewhere, maybe here, or probably before location, I don't know, but whichever way that we can try um, after location, you put the Keza there, and then, you drop down, you go to paragraph, you drop down, you are trying to create a subheading. The history is a subheading or a subsection because you're going to write something beneath it. So what we call a subheading or a subsection is this. So this is a subsection, right? So there's a subtopic and then some brief information about it. And then there's academics and some brief information about it then programs, and you see the listings, affiliation, all these are sub sub headings or subsections, right? And so if I want to talk about history, it's going to be 
a subsection. So I click on the paragraph and then I come to subheading, right? And then the subheading is created. I will click on, uh, sorry, uh, what do you call it? The heading is created and then I'll click on, let's say history, right? And when I do that, anything I type beneath, okay, anything, don't do this. I'm just showing you because I'm going to delete it. Anything I do here, or maybe let me just to make it reasonable. Um, the school was established in 19, maybe 87, or let me just say 1935. Okay. So this was the first secondary, or let's say the first missionary secondary school built by the Roman Catholic Church in Ghana. You know, something like this. And then you can add more because the history could be, uh, maybe they didn't even start from their current location. They used to be somewhere and then they moved to the permanent location who was the first headmaster, you know, um, if there's any historical, um, um, what do you call it? Historical um, um, events, right? That makes the school outstanding. Or there's a history of the school related to the, uh, related to the region that it's located in. If the school has played a past, for instance, the school probably has, produced some past president, you know, all those other things um, are relevant information that helps people to understand what the school is about. Okay, so that's, a, and what I've just done is that I've contributed information um, under history. I've created a subsection or a subheading, um, sorry, I've created a, a, a heading with some information about the school and if I want to keep this, I will go to publish changes. And what did I do? I added, I would simply say I added more content. And I'll end it there. And then I'll add my hashtags. Hashtag after week. Okay. And then hashtag one lip one ref. It doesn't matter, like I said, whichever one. So then you do it like this and you publish the changes. I'm not going to do that because um, the statements here, I'm not sure they are true. That is the process you can, um, so for instance, if, uh, if the school has a, an official website, let me see if St. Thomas has an official web website, Thomas. Aquinas, Aquinas High School. Let me see if they have a website. They do have a Facebook account. They don't have a website on their own, at least for now. Um, let me see this. No, they don't have. No, they don't have a website on their own. But assuming they had a website on their own, another... Um, Another thing I could do is to create an external link, which is also an edit. So, so we are talking about this school. And assuming you had an official website, you can link the article to the website so that people can now, who are interested in knowing more about the school beyond what is on Wikipedia, can now go there to learn more about the school from the website but like uh, you saw they don't have um they don't have a website um there yet i see some but the process of doing that, that would is is very very easy uh okay so let's just assume this is please this is typical assumption 
typical assumption. This is not to say this is the original website of the school, but assuming this were their website, how do I link it to the Wikipedia article? I will copy the link, go back, and then activate my, my edit, right? And then anywhere, anywhere, the school name is mentioned that I believe I can link it up, I will do that. So, okay. There's, so you can, you can do it in two ways. To make things very structured, people would prefer to create external links um, section and then have those ones there. But others would simply, so for instance, I can simply select this, right? And then I'll come to this hyperlink um, tab here, and then I'll click on it. And I would say it's an external link because I'm copying it from the, I'm, I'm linking this to their website. So I will go to external link rather than a Wikipedia link. I'll go to external link and then I'll paste it. And when I paste it and I click on done, Immediately I click on done, it becomes a hyperlink. And anytime I click on that, it will now send me to the school's website. I won't do that because that is not the original school website, but I'm just using that to demonstrate. Now, assuming that there are other related articles on Wikipedia. So for instance, um, what I see here, let me go to, let me type Thomas Aquinas High School. Let me go to the top. Saint. Okay. I want to see if there are any. Okay. So we have a lot of Thomas Aquinas schools here, but if you check it very well, you would see that the locations are not in Ghana. So it's not about blindly linking things, right? Yes. Um, so, but that's a process. You can do in, um, you can do the uh, internal links and you can also do the external links. Um, internal links means that you are linking um, a particular aspect of a Wikimedia article, a particular aspect to another um, related article. So let's see, assuming, let, what if we want to find out if um, there's an article on cantonments um, in Ghana, and it must be in Ghana because this is in Ghana. Uh, okay. To make things very easy. Maybe we, okay, Cantonments is already linked here. So let's try Accra. And um, Accra thank you. Is this is really also important. one very important thing. Um, when you are, if yours is to do the internal and external links, make sure that you don't link a word that has already been linked. So as you can see, Accra has been linked up here. And so if I if I create another link, it's completely redundant. It is useless. But I'm just using that as a process to let you know. So there are various words, phrases, um, um, terms in Wikipedia articles that find um, expression in complete articles, right? And so what the linking does is to help people understand what they are reading better by connecting what they are reading to other articles that, that are on Wikipedia that talk about similar, the same or a similar subject matter. Okay, so because somebody has is writing about St. Thomas Aquinas and he says he's in Greater Accra, somebody would want to know more about where Greater Accra is located. And so the linking makes it very easy to find out more about this greater Accra they are talking about. Okay. So yeah, that's really the essence of the 
um, the linkages. But an article like this, what would be really useful is to have the external link section here, somewhere here, um, uh, before references. And then if they have a website, then you can and direct people to their website to get more information about them. So an article like this is also there. Um, I found this part. Elections have been held every four years since 92. The presidential and parliamentary elections are held alongside each other, generally on the 7th of December, every four years. Now, this is a statement of fact and obviously must be um, verified or supported with some references. Even though you are not seeing citation needed um, tax, now like I always want to say um, it's not all the time you've been looking out for citation needed tax before you realize that an article needs to be improved by way of references. Statement of claims that are in there is enough, and that requires for you to read. Okay, um, not the um, if you like the mechanic way of just identifying citation needed tax, because some articles do not have, but actually need um, to be improved by providing citation. Data. But let's look at this. This is generally telling us that the ele electoral cycle of, of Ghana is every four years. And um, this should find, this should have a reference, at least to make it valid, because not every, some countries have um, electoral cycle, five years, um, stuff like that. And so if it's possible that we can get, um, so Ghana's electoral system, this is our electoral commission's website. And uh, obviously there is, no, there, is, there is no credible source than this. So let's see if we can get some information that um, supports the claim. So we come to presidential elections. It says in Ghana, the presidential election is held every four years to elect the president who is the head of the state and commander-in-chief through majoritarian system, the two-round system. And then we have the parliamentary election that also follows the same cycle, but with the first past the post system, which is majority carrying the vote system. So this bit gives a lot of information that would help us confirm the claims that are here. So we can just copy the URL, the EC electoral system, come to the um, Wikipedia article, activate edit, and then elections have been held every four years. Presidential and parliamentary elections are held alongside each other, generally on. So we can either choose to put it here because there's a bit of a four-year cycle, or you can choose to put it here, whichever one. And then when you put the Keza, you click on the site. And because it's a URL, you've copied it. You just paste, and then you click on Create. And let's wait for Wikipedia to generate the URL for us. Sorry, the reference for us. And that's it. It's done. And then I click on insert. And when I click on insert, I will come to publish. Okay, the insert only adds the reference, but it becomes permanent when you click on publish. What did I just do? I added a citation and then I put my wiki afflip. Uh, sorry, no, this is not my afflip wiki. And one live wonder, and then I click on publish changes. Right now, the information we have here, here, apart from simply looking for a reference, we just picked an information here that we realized that the the system of electing the presidential candidate is different from the system of electing the parliamentary candidate. Okay, so. Um, by this, you can even use that information to improve on this bit, okay? This bit only talks about election cycle, but you can provide information that says that 
the presidential election or the president is selected through the majoritarian system, which means is a 50 by 50% 50 plus one. And then the parliamentary system, parliamentarians are selected by a simple majority. When you do that, you have added significant information to improve on the understanding of the electoral system in Ghana. Okay. So that's how to find information and improve on existing information um, um, on, on, on various subject matters in Africa. I don't know if there are any questions, but I think I've done, um, I've gone through a lot of the information already, what you can do, what you cannot do, and all that. The dashboard will be tracking information. The dashboard will be tracking information on all contributions between the 1st and the 31st. I'm going to share. There's no good to do that. Rose is saying that she wants to be enlightened on one leg, one leg. Yeah, yeah, so I'm moving to, to that. Okay. Right. Um Rose, you know, you know one live one ref. Um it's it's a global campaign and it's a very simple exercise. Every year the Wikimedia community has a, um, set up a calendar. There's a calendar of events. There's that the, the one live one ref happens in twice every year. There is a uh, the first part of the year, which is um, um, around January, yes, January, and then the the second part of the uh, the year, which is around May. Um, so it is done in those two main months, January and then in May. Sometimes it ends maybe the end, the first week of June or there, about it depends. But mainly in May and then in January, and it, it's a simple thing. It is. The period where the Wikimedia community is conversing for people, especially librarians, to go onto Wikipedia to look for articles that need references and then to add those references. Now, because librarians have the skill of finding references, credible references, Right, and then putting identifying references. That is why this campaign was coined. So it's like it is something that directly falls within your natural domain. Identifying references when people come to you and they want an information on this, you're able to tell, oh, go and get this book, or go and get this book. And go. That's simply what it is. There is information on Wikipedia, and many of them, as we've just done do not have references. But the truth of the matter is that the credibility of the information on Wikipedia is as heavy as the references that are um, 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 assigned to them. If you make a statement and you don't have a reference to it, nobody takes it serious because nobody can verify the truth of, of that statement. And so what the one Live one rev does is that Librarians are given the skill on how to edit on Wikipedia, how to contribute information on Wikipedia and these sister projects. And then within the period, librarians will scout and, and browse Wikipedia, look for information on, uh, look for articles that need help in terms of references. And then now go and search for those references like we just did. And then add it on those articles that need the references. So that's what the campaign is about. Now, we call it the African Librarians Week or the Library Activism Month because our focus is on African content, right? We have personalized the campaign because we believe that, in fact, on, on, the, on, the, on, on, the, on the platform, when it comes to African knowledge, we don't have as much as compared with um, knowledge, open knowledge available for the global north. And so what we are doing is that we are the same principle, but we are giving the African librarians a skill and mobilizing them to go on Wikipedia to one, create content about Africa, 
to identify content about Africa that needs help. The help can be by way of references, and then we add those references to those content, right? Or content by way of improving the, the uh, uh, what you generally improving the information about those, uh, uh, whatever subject matter it is or article on, on, on Wikipedia. Like what I try to do when it comes to the history component of the school. So if I find myself in a place where I have information, access to information, I, I cannot put it there and then um, others can now consume. So that's what the, uh, the, the whole campaign is about. I will hand over to um, Doreen at the moment uh, for wrap up, unless there are any questions. Thank you.